hi everyone I am Jamie and I'm doing this a little different today I am actually broadcasting live directly into our preschool steam group so that you guys can all follow along with our five-day steam challenge which this month we are inspired by the Disney movie Finding Dory and so I'm so excited this week to bring you five different STEAM activities specifically designed for our young learners and they're all relating or go along with the movie. But don't worry, you don't have to have seen the movie and I promise no spoil alerts. Uh, so if you have not seen the movie, it is okay. We will, um, you can still follow along without watching the movie. And so, I just want to briefly explain how our STEAM challenges work. Uh, about every month, I bring a new STEAM challenge that consists of five activities, all based around one central theme. And last month, we did bubbles. And so I still have the videos uh, down in the Facebook thread. And I'll put a direct link in the comments once I'm done with this live video. So that if you want to check out our bubble STEAM challenge, you can do that. And as I said, this week it's all about Finding Dory. Now, I did get a chance to see the movie. I took all three kids, their ages, just turned seven, just turned five and two, and I took them for the first time all by myself to the movie theater. So that was quite an adventure. But we survived and we had a fun time watching the movie. And so it was fun then to do these projects now after they have seen the movie. But like I said, you don't have to have seen it. And just as a full disclosure, I am in no way sponsored by or affiliated with Disney. I have not been paid for this. This is not a paid promotion. What I like to do is I like to hook my children into an activity by using their interests. And lately we've been doing a lot of ocean and fish projects. So Finding Dory was just a great fit to hook them in and uh, do our next challenge. Okay, so let's get right into it because I know we're all busy here and I don't want to take up all afternoon. In fact, I have all mine doing quiet time in the back. So hopefully I told them this was live and not to interrupt. But anyway, here we go. We are building your own underwater scope. So all you need is simply a plastic two liter bottle, preferably clear so that we can see through it, a sheet of plastic wrap, so just like your saran plastic wrap, and a rubber band to tie around. Now you could also tape it, but a rubber band works really easy. Now originally, I had cut off the top. And if you are going to an actual pond or lake, you may want to cut off the top too because it gives you more room to view down inside. However, if you are going to do it the ocean play way, then I suggest leaving the eye part or well, it's not the eye part, but I recommend leaving the top part of the two liter bottle on because it gives a direction um, for your preschooler's eye to go and it really helps them zero in on it. Okay, so I am going to show you how we use this inside without going to the neighborhood pond, which I'm hoping we can do this afternoon if it doesn't rain. So, uh, and I will update our uh, blog posts with pictures if we do get down to the live pond. But if you don't have access to a pond or lake, let me show you what you can do. And I'm just gonna move this quickly, hopefully not make you too sick. So what we have here, I think we're a little crooked, but there we go, is we have set up just some water play inspired by the ocean and Finding Dory. And this is all child made. So I let my kids, I set out the material and then they put it together. So in here we have some shells, we have some sea creatures, which if you had a plastic dory, you could throw, throw her and her friends in. We even have some handmade fish here, just simply from foam paper and permanent markers, some glass beads and rocks. And we used to have more rocks, I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> Those made it out of the ocean, but 
so we have this and water play is important because it's a sensory experience. And especially for young children, sensory experiences are basically a simple way to explore and process new information. They're using their five senses, touching, smelling, well, maybe not tasting this one, but using your sense of touch and vision and even hearing with the sounds that the splashes make, all of that provides a sensory rich experience. And that helps your child learn how to be not only an observer, but also how to inquire, discover, and experiment. Okay, so let's go and take a look at our under the water scope. And I'm wondering if we can do this even on the camera. Now, obviously the saran wrap or the plastic wrap doesn't magnify. This isn't like using a magnifying glass, but what it does is by looking through the top part, you really focus in and let's use maybe our lobster here. It really helps you focus in. I'm trying to angle it here with the camera and really observe what is happening on the water. And so using this underwater scope, it brings a whole new dimension to just the water play. So first my children played with the water, set it up, and then we built the underwater scope as an addition to that. And when we go to take it to the pond, that will bring a whole new experience. So sensory rich experiences don't have to involve a lot of manipulatives or a lot of materials. You can use simple basic materials to it, let your children explore and try new things. And, you know, this could become a spy glass or a telescope. Let them get creative and use their imagination. So that is it. I'll move the camera back up. Oh, there we go. Okay. So we use our underwater scope. And that is our challenge for day one, is keeping track of what you see or observe with your own underwater scope. If you have any questions, go ahead. You can list them here in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. I would love to see a picture. If you get a chance to take a picture and build your own underwater scope, uh, it would be a lot of fun to see that. So you can post that into the group as well. Well, I, that's it for day one. Tomorrow, I will bring you a brand new uh, challenge. And I have to say, tomorrow was one of my favorite ones. And I'll explain why tomorrow. But anyway, once again, I'm Jamie from Handmade Kids Art. And thank you for following along with our five-day scene challenge.